I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming, and today we are reviewing a plethora of HOTAS setups from Thrustmaster, from Logitech, from SciTech. Let's do this. Now, before I start, I should probably quickly explain HODAS is an acronym, hands-on, throttle, and stick. So what your hands are actually on, and there are a bunch of acronyms. There's acronyms for hands-on stick and stick, people that like using two joysticks instead, keyboard and stick. These, this is entirely a HOTAS setup review. Now, where this came from is you guys have been sharing the heck out of our Logitech versus Thrustmaster force feedback wheel setup, and I could not be more grateful. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. And this is a little gift back to you guys, because I know I, for one, am very excited about this new Star Wars Squadrons game coming out in VR. All manners of excited. And whether you play in VR or otherwise, there's a lot to take in when you're looking at HODAS setups. My goal here is to not put you to sleep. So I'm not going to be talking about, you know, your 11-bit 2048 step sensors and the hall free sensors and the... I'm just going to be talking about the features they have, how they feel, how they differentiate each other. And, and hopefully this will help you decide what's right for you. Enough lollygagging, let's get to the actual review. I have over here a HODAS 1. This is for the Xbox One. I don't have a HODAS 4. It is exactly the same as the HODAS 1, except it's for the PlayStation 4. There is no weird coding for that. They both have jacks that you can plug in a rudder. So if you want to buy a rudder in the future, that might be something you want to consider. The HODAS X for PC does not have a jack for a rudder. Mind you, you can buy rudders that just plug straight in via USB, but this is also significantly cheaper than these two. Well, buy like 20 or 30 bucks, depending where you're looking. Um, but these are both available on PC as well. So there, it has a switch. If you want to use these on PC, you can. This one is PC only. Very important to know. Other than that, they are exactly the same aside from this having an Xbox One button and the other one having a PlayStation 4 button. The PC one doesn't have a PC button. Now, all three of these setups are tethered together. So there is only one USB cable and they are connected to each other with a cable that is currently coiled up underneath the throttle itself. There's an Allen head on the bottom. So that if you want to lock them together, you can. You can just pop it out. It's a neat little storage solution. Uh, and then you can tighten it up so that they are snug to each other and that they will not come apart without loosening up those screws. The stick has an eight-way hat, has three buttons on the base and a twist action. The throttle has six buttons on the handle and a rocker switch, which for example works splendid for strafing your ship to the left or right in Elite Dangerous when you're trying to land. Plus it's got three buttons on the base. Resistance on the joystick itself can absolutely be adjusted. There is a wheel on the bottom of the joystick that can be turned both clockwise, counterclockwise. One will make it tighter, one will make it looser. There is no resistance on the throttle itself. Itself. The throttle is loose to the front, it's loose to the back, but there is a notch where it sits dead center. Another thing to point out is the fact that these are non-mountable. This is basically designed to sit on a surface and use it. There are no holes, there are no bolt holders on the bottom, this is just designed to sit on the surface and that's it. Now how about I get to my impression on this setup? There is no question that this feels like the cheapest setup of all the ones I'm going to be reviewing. And that is because this is the cheapest setup of all of the Hoda setups that I will be reviewing. I personally don't love the fact that there is zero resistance on the throttle. That, that it just drops forward and drops backwards. It, there's something about that that just feels extra cheap to me. It's super handy if you're playing a game like Elite Dangerous where you're flying around in space and you have a dead stop that you can pop it in reverse or pop it in forward. Uh, but just the fact that it's so floppy, it, it doesn't feel great. Plus there is a button on the, on the throttle itself that you have to turn your whole hand to get it. So I believe on this one, it is the Y button. On this one, it's the B button. But yeah, it just sits on the throttle in a really funny place. And if you could push like in the palm of your hand, maybe you could reach it, but it, it's not ideal by any means. That is not to say that this is not a good starter HODA setup. It absolutely could be. This could be exactly what you're looking for, but that's my super quick takeaway on these three. Next up, the Thrustmaster T16000M. Now this joystick has 12 buttons on the base with indents and braille style bumps to help find it while dogfighting quickly. There's also a slider on the base that you can push back and forth from dead center of the joystick. There are three buttons at the top as well as a single stage trigger and a hat switch. And let us not forget the stick twists as well. Now the throttle has an RJ11 port on the back so that if you want to hook up rudders from Thrustmaster, that's totally doable. It is entirely different from every other 
throttle set that I review today because this slides back and forth. It does not rock backwards and forward, it slides backwards and forwards. And that really does give it a totally different feel. Good or bad, it is a totally different feel. On the right hand, there's a POV button, two four-way POV hat switches, an eight-way POV hat. On the rear, there's an analog clickable thumbstick, a two-way switch, two buttons, and a two-way rocker. And let us not forget the dial on the side, right over here. Dialy, dialy, round it goes. You'll also note aesthetically, this thing has orange highlights all over the place. Well, guess what? When it's plugged in and you're moving the stick, the orange actually glows. There is an LED light only on the joystick side. I should also note that the T16000M uses two USB ports. And this is also the first Thrustmaster setup, uh, the others don't, that uses Thrustmaster's target software. Another acronym. So this allows you to tweak, edit macros, uh, your joystick sensitivity, and much more. Although I found the target software to be a little clunky, honestly, and I didn't spend a lot of time with it, and it's not required. So if you really want to tweak this thing out, that software is available, but I, I found, as far as usage goes, it, it wasn't necessary. Drivers were a breeze to install, but honestly, drivers were a breeze to install on every one of these. Windows 10, plug them in, and it just works. It downloads the drivers, I could pop into my joystick menu, everything just worked. Again, if you want the extra features on some of these sets, you'll have to download their software, but it works out of the box just by plugging it straight in. Windows 10 only is the only thing I tested them all on. Now I talked about a unique feature of the throttle. Something that's unique about the stick is it is totally ambidextrous. Although it does come with rubber to hold for a right-handed grip, it also comes with the rubber pieces so that you can use it left-handed. These pop off and then it's like a mirror version of what's on here and you can use it on your left hand. The only thing is if you're using this on your left hand, you cannot use this throttle on your right hand. The buttons are just, I mean, unless you got amazing pinkies and I'm not gonna judge, maybe you do, but unless, unless your pinky can do all kinds of magic, that's not really going to be a proper setup for your right hand. So if you're running a whole SAS setup, right? Two joysticks. Absolutely, this would work great, but otherwise it's still only going to be used for your right hand if you're running a throttle anyway. There are rubber pads on the bottoms of both of these, so they're less likely to skid across your table, plus there are holes in the bottom. If you decide to hard mount these, these can be hard mounted. My impression on this setup, I really dislike the plastic they use for the hat switches. They feel super cheap. They may not be, maybe it's super fancy, you know, gold undersided plastic, I don't know, but it feels sharp and it feels cheap. Every one of the hat switches feel uncomfortable to me. The fact that it slides forward to back on the throttle itself wouldn't bother me at all, except I cannot make it slide smooth. It, it slides smooth and then it kind of jerks and it grabs a little bit. And I mean, I didn't oil it up. I didn't try to figure out some way to, to lube the thrust master, which sounds like it would be a totally different review, but out of box, and I mean, I, I had a bunch of people try it out and everybody said it feels like it's, it's not as smooth. Every other stick, you could go forward to backwards relatively smooth and I couldn't get this thing to do that. And maybe it's just my model. Maybe everybody else's works fine if you have one in it and it's 100% smooth all the way through. I'd love to hear it in the comments. I like the fact that there's an LED in the joystick. Even if I'm in VR, I know you're not seeing it, but I don't like the fact that they didn't put any LED in the throttle. I, I wish it would glow a little bit of orange as well. The buttons on the base of the joystick, I think would be very handy if you didn't have a throttle. Where they're located, you kind of have to take your hands off of both your stick and your throttle if you want to use all 12 buttons that are actually on the joystick. So to me, that feels like a really bad placement unless you're using just the joystick. And you could do that because it has that slider, right? You could use that as your throttle. This could be not your, your hodas, but this could be your entire, that single joystick could do all of your uh, flight maneuvering for you. Let's talk about the X52 and the X52 Pro, or the GX52 as Logitech calls them. This all begins with a long story about a company called SciTech. Logitech bought them. Okay, it's not a long story, but it's a story. That's what happened. So SciTech originally made the X52, they made the X52 Pro, they made an X55. Uh, Logitech has stated numerous times that they have done lots of work and have improved on the quality control. Now the differences between the X52 and the X52 Pro are as follows. The LCD is upgraded on the throttle, so it gives you more options. Things like in-game data in real time, plus it's built with more metal inside. So in theory, it should last longer. Oh, and the color, it's more black. Yep, it's more black. That's 
different. Aside from that, the setup is exactly the same. The button locations, the coloring is a little bit different. Like I said, not just the color of the stick itself, but the color of the little flip up thing that'll protect you from pressing the, the fancy button. The joystick has two eight way hat switches, four buttons, that little flip up cover that I was just talking about that gets bonus points because everyone I showed this to loved it. There's something very Top Gun about flipping up the button and now you can press it. Put the protector down, you can't press the button. Flip it up, you can press the button. There is a three-way selector switch, a dual action primary trigger. Now this is the only joystick of the entire batch. So both the X52 and the X52 Pro has a dual stage trigger. And I'm gonna explain that that means if you pull it a little bit, it makes a click. You pull it all the way in, it makes a secondary click. So it actually has a dual stage trigger, as well as a pinky trigger with the pinky trigger and the base able to be adjusted up and down. So based on your hand size, you can turn this and you can lift it up and down so that everybody will be able to reach all of the buttons that are on the joystick itself. It also has a twist feature like every other joystick we've reviewed so far has. However, if you don't like the fact that it can twist because you're using rudders, there is a little lock mechanism on the bottom. You can pull out, twist is gone. You wanna be able to twist it, push it back in, it twists just fine. Did I mention that some of the buttons glow blue on the stick? Well, I should've. Next up, let's talk about the throttle and the LCD that is built into it, which also glows blue, so as you know. Now this has some basic info that it can display, such as current mode, which profile, uh, some clock and date information. Now what makes this more useful, at least to me, is there is an I button on the throttle. And when you hold that I button in and press any other button or trigger, it'll display the button's assigned role from the currently loaded profile on the LCD. And then of course, there's a function start, stop and reset button for the LCD as well. The throttle also has an adjustable wheel on the left hand side that lets you adjust how much tension there is to move it forward or to move it backwards. There are two jog wheels, an up and down slider, a hat switch, two more buttons and a mouse pointer button, the little blue mouse pointer button. So if you're ever in a menu and you don't wanna like get up and move your mouse or whatever, especially if you're in a rig of any sort, uh, you can actually move your mouse around with that little blue button. I actually found that to be incredibly handy. Now this Hoda setup runs off of a single USB and it's got a six pin PS2 cable that runs from the throttle to the joystick. So it's actually like an old, PS2 six pin cable. Now my impression on this, reading up quality control issues online, I've read of people having issues with their LCD screen on the SciTech. Uh, Logitech has gone out of their way, like I said before, to say that that is vastly improved. Well, all of SciTech stuff is apparently improved. Um, this old beat up X52 here is exactly that. It is my old beat up X52 and it has worked flawlessly. My LCD has worked good. Everything has worked good. All my buttons are fine. Um, some people complain that the spring is too loose and there are ways you can modify that either 3d print a little thing that sits underneath that spaces it people run different kinds of spacers. Uh, this doesn't give you the option to adjust how loose or how tight the joystick moves back and forward. That is something you should know and it's it's quasi loose. I would say it's it's quite loose to move around. It always pops back to the center but it's not, it's not a tight move. And that's the X52 and the X52 Pro. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the GX56 Rhino. The joystick has a pinky trigger as well as a button behind it, three hat switches, a thumbstick, two buttons, and a single stage trigger. The throttle has two hat switches, an analog thumbstick, seven switches, two dials, also a tension adjustment so you can adjust how easy or how hard it is to pull it forwards and backwards, and you can lock or unlock the twin throttles. So you can actually separate these two. So if let's say your game supports and one of your engines dies and you only have power in the other, you can pull one back, push the other one forward. But if that's too much for you or you just don't find a use, you slide in, lock it together and it's just one throttle. Now it says VR right on the back of the box. And it says that it's because it has different textures on different buttons to make your life easier when you're in VR. I don't really find that. What I find is the fact that, I mean, there's a lot of metal on here. The metal switches, feel really high quality. There's metal bars in between them. And maybe it would be easier to find that to feel around in it a little bit when you're in VR, but there's still a lot of switches to keep in mind. So you're gonna have to have this quasi memorized before you pop into VR if you're using like half of the switches on here. In total, this has five hats and 31 programmable buttons. And that's three modes. It's got three mode switches as well. This one, unlike the X52, actually comes with four different springs, all of varying tension. Plus, if you want, you don't even have to use a spring. If you want it to feel really loose, run it spring-free. But there are four different springs in the kit, 
and the joystick pops off relatively easily and you can get at that and change the tension to whatever it is you like. Mind you, all those springs and it's missing that little flip up cover thing that I love so dearly and everyone loved it. It wasn't just me. I had a bunch of people try this out, all the different sticks to kind of feel them a little bit and give me the impression. Everybody loved that little flip up thing. X56, why don't you have that little flip up thing? The Logitech software will not only let you tweak the settings of how much movement everything is, but it also lets you adjust the colors. So if you just plug this in, it'll install the drivers and everything will work perfect. However, if you want extra features, you have to install the Logitech software, which will let you, you know, pick your pretty colors to whatever you like, as well as tweak everything to exactly how you want. Oh, also it comes with a spacer on the back of the stick that I, I always left on, but what it does is it actually just elongates where your hand rests. So it makes it a little bit longer and uh, everybody that tried it said, oh, this one feels really comfortable. And it's honestly, it's just a little piece of plastic clip that goes on here that just stretches it out the back a little bit, but it's, it's a neat addition and it comes with it. And I didn't mention, this is also two USB ports. My only issues with the X56 Rhino is it didn't feel like all the buttons are easy to get to without moving my hand. Whereas on the X52 and the X52 Pro, I didn't actually ever have to lift my hand off of the rest. I could reach every button that I needed to without moving my hand up, without actually twisting it. On the throttle, there was one button that was more of a pain in the butt. But again, that's personal preference. Everything else, based on what it is, is, is solid. It just needs that little, that little flippy button. I tell you, that thing is awesome. Every joystick should come with one of those. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when our stuff is coming out. That's the way you do it. Turn that little notification thing on and boom, Bob's your uncle. You'll hear when I put another video out. Lots more stuff coming. Hardware wise, I don't know what I want to tackle next. If you have suggestions, I am all ears. If I can help you guys out, I want to help you out. I will talk to you again real soon. See ya.